Welcome to Calculated Survival, where we plan to survive and refuse to die. Today is our part two of our um, land, nav. land nav courses. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be actually using your pace count that we used in the first video, now adding an azimuth and a point. Actually, we're going to do two points today, and you're going to walk that azimuth, and we're going to explain to you what that is, to find those points, which are going to be uh, special little toys for you today for this holiday. <laughs> um, so the first thing we're going to do, though, is because we did the pace count, we're going to teach you what a compass is. Now, this is a Lenzetic Army compass. It's the one that we used in the Army. It's a Lenzetic compass because it simply has a lens. Um, and what the lens is good for is for somebody like me, when you get older, when you look down on it, which we'll show you later, a close-up view, is that you can actually see your degrees. So if you come over here, you can actually come and see the compass. So the compass here, if you see the, uh, there's red marks and there's black marks. The red marks are simply your degrees and the black marks are mills. So we're gonna use the red marks, which is degrees, 360 degrees in a circle. And that's how we're gonna shoot our azimuth. Um, this is always going to magnetic north. We'll worry about something called declination diagram and declinations in another video. This one here, we're simply showing you the compass, how to use the compass and how to walk a direction in azimuth. Um, the second thing we have today, Luke, is we have a map. And this map is of this area. So if you wanna zoom in on this. So this is a map of this area of this high school and the fields around it. So as you can see, these lines here are contour lines. The closer they are, the steeper the hill. This here would be a hilltop. Um, and that's what they call a topographical map, right? Yeah, this is a topographical map because it shows your contour lines and, and um, water bodies and different elevations through the contour lines. Like if you see this number 450, that means the elevation is 450. This one's 568, so that means that's a higher elevation. <clears throat> so where we are is, is right above here. Sea level? Actually, out of curiosity, it, it is above sea level. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. So this would be right here would be where we're starting this little black dot at this parking lot. And if you look around, this is the parking lot. So Luke, I'm going to give you your very own map, oh, sweet. which is in a map case. I am going to give you the compass. Okay. And so you can see how to, how to shoot a degrees. All right, so what we're gonna have you walk today is, and I'll give you the okay. pen, this is a dry erase marker. All right. So you put everything into a, a plastic, um, plastic or, you know, like I have a sheet covering so you can use a dry erase marker. Okay. So you're gonna do the first one at 132 degrees. Okay. For 260 meters. 260. Okay. And then from that point, you're gonna go 180 degrees okay. for 200 meters. 200 meters, okay. Yep, and each one of those you should find a point. You'll know when you got there, happy holidays. <laughs> okay. Okay? And yeah. I think that's really all you need to know. Do you have any questions on the compass? Oh, and do you have your ring? Yeah, I got my ring. Okay, so you can keep your pace so counter. Keep my little pace count there. All right. all right, you have any questions? You know, familiarize yourself real quick with the... Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna look. I'm gonna look in this one spot. Hold it like a, got my thumb through there. And uh, make sure I keep this thing perfectly level because if I go like this, I can change the degrees, I noticed. Yeah. Um, so I got to make sure this thing is moving around inside, able to move freely, shall I say. And you said 132, so now I'm going to look down at the black line on here and with getting my compass towards my back. And um, yeah, can you see that? So this black line right here, I'm going to put that on 132. I don't know if it is right now. But uh, then I'm going to look through here make sure I can see that and then through this little line here I'm gonna line it up with this wire and get my 132 so what do I see at 132 probably right around 40 actually over my steps so okay so it's important to note so when you took that you aimed at the crosshairs and you found a target that you're gonna walk directly to yep because if you couldn't find a target, then you would have to actually walk with the compass. Yeah, like some stuff. You would have to you have to walk with the compass at that angle and keep your bearing, which is a lot more difficult than simply shooting your degrees, finding an object, and then 
shooting it again if you get to that object and you're not there yet or you, you need more steps okay so um and you know you, you might need to do that in the second one you know most of these times you're not going to be able to shoot straight to the object this is the intro so we're going to make it a little easier for you today okay. the next class we do it's going to be a little bit tougher okay all right so here you go take your map and then you're on your way so from right here Luke found his first point, and then he ended up taking his second azimuth reading. He got him, and as you can see, he's going to line up the magnetic north, then set the azimuth selector, and then he's going to go ahead and put the magnetic north into the azimuth, azimuth selector, and then walk his point and his line. Luke found a bench and he ain't what that he ain't that that was in his direct line of his azimuth. So he chose that and he's walking there using his pace count. Once he gets there, he has about 40, 45 meters left. He's going to find another place that he can shoot his azimuth and then he's going to walk to it and hopefully he walks upon the point. If he didn't walk upon the point, and he's in the area. He will do a clover leaf, which is just a, a leaf section to go over to search for the point. He is just about at the point right now. Uh, by the distance, he sees it because I did put it up higher, and then he's coming back. So Luke was able to successfully shoot two azimuths and using his pace count, able to find the two points. This is something that we'd want you to try out first before going ahead and doing a land nav course that's over a greater period of time or distance. Found your points, man. Yeah. Nice. Told you happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. All right, so how was it? That was actually relatively easy. Um, yeah, just finding the degrees was simple enough. I mean, did yeah. you Did you walk onto your point or did you have to look for it a little bit? Oh, I actually didn't have to look for it at all, really. I mean, it was kind of obvious. It was bright yeah. white and red. I, there was one point when I was like, oh, man, I got I to gotta walk around like a, a thorn bushes and stuff. But then when I, I, I saw the snowman up there, I'm like, okay. All right, so if you this had guy. to walk around and there was no snowman, what would you have done to to make sure you had your approximation of your right distance? Well, me, steps? without any proper training, I'd probably say, all right, it looks like I got X amount of... Uh, bushes in my way, I'll count my pace this way, then go forward. Once I reach my 200 mark, and I'll take the same paces back in. I, that's how I would have well, done it. It's the best way. You're just going to estimate it because you sometimes oh, okay. have to step around. I made sure you didn't go over a fence, so you didn't have to worry about it. That's <laughs> why this little guy was sitting in the fence probably, right? Yeah. Hope he was still there. Yeah. Then this other one, I made sure that I didn't make it too easy for you. That you had to take a second azimuth. Did you have to? I did, actually. I, I, well, because it was over the hill. It was on the other side of that hill. Right. So you took your second azimuth? Yeah. I pointed, uh, the, there was a bench, so I saw that one. I, I stuck to the bench, and then when I got to the bench, I did it again. Okay. I took that 180 shot, same exact degrees from where I shot before. And did you walk pretty much on, up onto him? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were only walking somewhere around 200, 250 meters. So the next time we come out and do this, we're not going to be in the open space. You might have to walk across the open space. But we're going to put these points out in the woods, and they're going to be probably about 600 to 800 meters apart from each other. Okay. I think you're going to see your two little friends again. <laughs> but because we're going to be in the wooded area, I'm going to make it probably a little fairer. Fair. I'll probably, you know, put them on a stake or something so you can see them. Oh. And we'll teach you a cloverleaf method. Okay. And on the next one, too, we're also going to teach you how to plot your own points and, and then do the azimuth to get there. Okay. So this one was the very simple way of just you got your pace count, you walked your azimuth, you found your points. So next time we'll do this, it'll be a little bit more difficult. All right.